Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lomachowskis. And today's the 17th of March 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this video recording. A quick market overview of what has happened recently and what, what's, what should, we could expect. Um, going uh, further but of course as always before we uh, jump in into the charts let's quickly um, have a read through our risk disclaimer so the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue Okay, so also just before we um, jump in into the uh, before we jump into the charts, a quick mentioning of let me just bear with me one moment. Um, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, uh, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free guys to visit us here on jfdbank.com uh, and uh, yep, uh, click on the research tab right there. Now then, uh, let's jump into the charts. Let's have a look at the technical picture. Now yesterday, uh, um, I spoke about DAX and this is what I was talking about yesterday. Basically, given that we had a new uh, sharp decline, given that we had a drop below the 8,700 level and then the 8,355 mark, and let me just refresh uh, everyone's memory what those levels are. So basically the 8,700 level was the lowest point of 2016 and the, um, the 2,355 zone was the lowest point of October to, uh, uh, 2014 or in other words even the lowest point of October, sorry October 2000, the lowest point of 2014. So basically as you can see the index uh, drifted, managed to drift back back up here a little bit um, and what I was talking about was that if we get a close at least above the 8700 zone then maybe there could be a possibility to consider some sort of a correction so we got our uh, we got our close above this level and um, slightly above that level of course but nevertheless we'll take that and as you can see from the technical side the daily candle forms somewhat of a pin bar here which could be a potential uh, uh, reversal signal. Now, however, uh, for now we're not going to get uh, our hopes up yet. Of course, don't get me wrong, the cash index currently is sitting higher, so it's currently balancing around the 8,800 mark, so uh, basically slightly above this, um, this 8,700 level. Um, now, we would like to see a push back above the 9,065 zone here um, which is the the, uh, the low of the thir 13th of March or should I say the low of last week and uh, then yes we could aim for the upside again maybe maybe we could go for a bit of a, a larger correction so that's why we're keeping a close eye on today uh, to today and tomorrow uh, on the it's 9065 zone because if we get a push above that then yes we may get a nice good maybe move back up here maybe even a test of that uh, psychological 10,000 zone so something to keep an eye on guys um, if in case this starts drifting back below the 8,700 territory well um, be careful we may revisit this 8,355 zone uh, which is the lowest point of 2014 or we could revisit the 8,255 mark which is the lowest point the current lowest point of, two, uh, of 2020 so we have to keep your eyes on that one now then um, IBEX 35 now the Spanish index uh, today we have a uh, a ban uh, from Spain on 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 any short sellings so um, on on the market so um, basically for about a month uh, well at least until further notice there they're, they're banning any short sellings so um, basically 
either this is not going to move or maybe the inv investors will start picking up here and pushing maybe this one to the upside again but um, for now we're going to remain probably cautious and just careful with this one um, we are at some interesting levels here so for example the 6700 zone which is the lowest point of march 2009 uh in a way we could keep an eye on that one but there are some other ones closer ones like for example this one right here um the high of july 2012 um and uh that's basically um around the 7000 and uh 200 zone so um again don't get me wrong it's a bit of a a big move here to miss out so that's why on this one we would uh, keep an eye on the four hour chart so on the four hour chart you can see we could actually grab this little level uh, let me just quickly put this one on the chart so this 6350 zone so maybe this could play out uh, nicely so we could if we get a push above this barrier here then yes we will aim for a bit of upside but let's not forget that uh, still we are below this downside resistance line so in a way any kind of move higher uh, up until this downside line could still be seen as a as a temporary correction before another leg of selling so something to consider so guys something to keep an eye on and the way we could uh, keep an eye on this one is if we get a push up of the 6350 territory then yes we might uh, aim for some higher levels um, but just maybe for a bit of correction again still don't get me wrong the overall uh, trend is still to the downside for now um, so yep uh, any kind of push higher so so far will be will be classed as a temporary correction um, similar story with the FTSE MIB now here and the Italian index now also Italy is suspending uh, its uh, short selling uh, for a while um, and uh, looking at this picture you can see that yesterday the pair oh, sorry the pair the index found good support around here around this uh, 15,000 zone so uh, maybe just slightly below that but nevertheless uh, it did overshoot it but as you can see this territory here uh, acted as a fantastic area of, of support back in June 2013 and also back in July uh, or is it June as well um, that's June as well 2016 so basically June June 2013 and June 2016 this area acted, acted as a very good area of support um, the index found uh, found a good hold up here and the big question here is now can we see a further decline um, now don't get me wrong if there are some uh, kind of signs of a potential correction um, on other indices those might kind of drag uh, the FTSE MIB after itself uh, after themselves and uh, kind of we could see maybe this one drifting back to the upside so how we could play this one out for example today is we'll keep an eye on some of these recent highs let me just quickly put them on the chart so we'll keep an eye on for example yesterday's high uh, which is roughly around the uh, 15,697 zone or uh, basically roughly around uh, around the 15,700 mark so if we get a nice push above that about that uh, 15,700 mark then we'll aim for a bit of correction here guys and then we'll aim for some of these higher levels. Uh, don't get me wrong, we will be very careful because we do have a good potential area of resistance around here near the 17 point, uh, 17,914 zone, which is the lowest point of December 2018. So yep, keep your eyes on this one, guys. But again, as I said, if we by any chance get a push back above the 15,700 mark, then, well, we could aim for some higher levels, slightly higher levels, uh, because still the overall trend is still to the downside. Silver um, found uh, support uh, near the 11,000, uh, oh, sorry, 11, point uh, 79 zone and rebounded sharply back up but as you can see uh, this is what I was talking about yesterday 
it stayed below this 13.65 mark, which is the lowest point of 2015. And uh, uh, basically, it continues to uh, be seen as a potential area of resistance here. So in other words, uh, yes, we could see another slide. Now, given that we have kind of distanced ourselves from ourselves from the 11.79 zone and uh, this move lower yesterday was quite severe so maybe the um, the range here today might not be as the same as as we had yesterday so um, in a way the big question here is can we actually drop below this 11.79 because let's not forget that if we look at the monthly chart that's where we are right now so we are basically on near the these summer lows here of 2009 and uh, we're, we're in actually in spring near spring lows 2009 so we are hitting these levels and uh, this picture here I mean okay it could drift further south given that we managed to uh, drop below this 13.65 zone which was a key was seen as a key area of support uh, so we could see a further move lower but what we're going to keep an eye on of course on uh, we'll keep an eye on this monthly chart because if if we see the month closing above the uh, that 13.65 level that I talked about that I mentioned well I mean maybe in that case we could see a, a bit of a correction here back to the upside because looking at this picture here I mean uh, yes, yes, of course, we, we have opened the path so far for now. We have opened the path towards uh, lower levels and we will aim for those lower levels if we see the monthly uh, monthly chart, monthly candle here uh, staying below the 13.65 zone. So something to consider, guys, something to keep an eye on. So, uh, yep, for now, of course, from the short-term perspective, um, we are drifting right now to a little bit to the downside, my, but my or my problem here today is um, will we actually reach this 11.79 because uh, the yesterday's move was quite uh, severe so uh, but if we start drifting below this level below this uh, 11.79 uh, zone then well this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and we could target lower areas for now probably we're going to remain a little bit more on the neutral side if we get a push back above the 13.65 area we'll aim for a bit of a correction a larger correction to the upside uh, ripple now very quickly on this so um, for now we're neutral looking at this daily chart you can see that this 0 0.1290 zone continues to hold and let me just remind you what that level was in the past and uh, this level here the 0 0.1290 has been seen as a very good area of support back in 2017 guys so basically in other words the lowest point of 2017 that's where the uh, crypto is currently stuck at it tried yesterday to overcome that barrier but uh, failed to do so as you can see it stayed above it so um, so in a way yes for now there's is a bit of positivity for the bulls uh, the only thing is there could be even more positivity for the bulls if we get a break of this uh, short-term downside resistance line taken from the high of February so um, again, uh, keep your eyes on some of these levels. Keep your eyes on the 0 0.1760 mark, which is the lowest point of December 2019. A nice good push above this and, uh, and above this downside line could in a way uh, open the door to some higher, slightly higher levels here. Initially, that's what we're going to be targeting the area, for example, around the 0 0.1990 um, or even uh, further north, uh, the area around the 0 0.2163 zone, which is the high of the 10th of March. So again, guys, something to consider. Wait for uh, wait for that. For now, we're wait for that confirmation break. For now, we're neutral on this one. We're, uh, we're from the very short term perspective from this uh, kind of from the more medium term perspective maybe we're more bearish than, bull, uh, than bullish however given that we are trading near the lows of 2017 guys that's where it's a little bit tricky with further declines if it drops below the 0 0.1290 then yes further declines are possible but if it stay, continues to trade above this and it breaks this um, this downside line well then maybe we could aim for some higher levels
um, NZD CAD. So this is also a daily chart. Now I'm going to stick for the, on this one for now. Um, basically, a battle of the two kind of weaker cu currencies here. Um, we do have a, a downside resistance line here taken from the um, the highest point of March 2019. Um, we are trading below this downside line still. And uh, but as you can see, the pair is struggling to um, overcome this barrier here, the 0 0.8264 mark, which uh, has been tested here uh, in in around 6th of March, um, is currently the lowest point of this March. Um, but as you can see, yesterday it did try to come close, it did try to overcome that, but failed to do so. And uh, yep, now we're seeing um, that a nice rebound here. Uh, uh, the only problem, of course, given that until it's trading below this downside line, and given it's, it's uh, until it's trading above this uh, this support area here around the 0 0.6264, uh, 0 0.8264 mark. Um, to be honest, we'll, we'll probably remain neutral here, um, especially looking at this daily chart. But um, from the four-hour chart perspective, maybe we could try to capture something here and. Uh, uh, basically, um, in a way, what we're going to do here is we're going to keep an eye on this little uh, intraday swing high here uh, of, of yesterday, which was around the 0 0.8524. A nice good push above this would also place uh, the rate above all of its EMAs here on the 4-hour chart, and then we may target some higher levels. Um, but again, for now, guys, we'll, we'll remain a bit careful and cautious. Um, like I said, we do have some good potential areas of resistance here um, but um, yes if we do get a push about the 0 0.8524 mark then we will aim for a bit of a larger correction up until this downside line that I've mentioned in terms of the downside um, to be honest um, it's still of course we would prefer to see a drop below that 0 0.8264 mark but um, in a way it's really difficult to find a good spot here a good potential level but that's that's why with the downside we'll remain cautious and we'll take a more conservative approach until we uh, see a drop below this level here, below this uh, 0 0.8264 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, GBPNZD, so um, I've looked at this one previously uh, last week and uh, basically here uh, what I was talking about was this upside support line that continues to hold and as you can see we had already a test of this of this upside line uh, yesterday and the rate rebounded so perfect move here the only thing uh, of course we'll remain very careful and cautious because we are now very close to this um, upside line again because if it fails to withhold and, and we see the rate falling below the 1.9989 zone here or in a way you could round it up towards the psychological 2 zone um, if we see a drop below that psychological 2 territory then well further declines are possible and then yep, we will aim for these levels that we saw here in around mid-January. So uh, keep your eyes on this one. That And that was roughly around the 1.95s. So yep, keep your eyes on that one. Um, in terms of the upside, now looking at this messy chart here, um, Probably we'll keep it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to stick to this little target here, and let me just probably zoom in here a little bit. Now we can get rid of this highlighted area. Um, now we will keep an eye on this little target here near the 2.0380 uh, mark. Um, if we get a push above this, then we'll have these EMAs here to test. But if those um, if those fail, then yep, we could start targeting these higher levels, these previous highs around the 2.0. 0560 and the 2.0670 territory. So, yep, guys, something to consider, or maybe even better here, we do have this 0 uh, 2.0764 mark. So, um, again, uh, for now, with the upside, we will uh, keep an eye on this little ter territory here to the 2.03, um, 2.0376 mark. Um, but if, um, yep, if with the downside, if this starts falling below the, the psychological two territory, then, well, further declines could be possible. Uh, USDCHF, very quickly on this, I mentioned this one uh, yesterday, and uh, basically here what I was talking about, about this upside support line that we should keep an eye on. 
you can see that the uh, the pair did try to drop uh, and it did drop below the 0 0.9419 level I've mentioned as well but it never even closed the four hour candle below it. So it tested this upside line as well, even had a small little overshoot here, but uh, quickly got back above it. And now it continues to trade above this upside support line. So of course, uh, all this is kind of painting uh, a nice, a nice kind of potential bullish atmosphere from the very short term perspective, because don't forget, we're overall, we're still below this downside line here. Uh, so from the very short term perspective, it could paint a nice bullish uh, picture here but um, still for us to get comfortable now to in order to get uh, excited about slightly higher levels that's the break that we're looking for we're looking for a push above the 0 0.95 70 zone here and uh, which is the high of last week and then yes we will aim for the upside in terms of the downside we stick to the same idea here of 0 0.9419 level a nice good drop below it could lead towards uh, some, towards some lower levels here. And finally, Euro USD. So um, again, it continues to bounce above this upside support line taken from the low of the 20th of February. Uh, basically, not much has changed from my previous analysis yesterday. So you can check out those um, in the morning in the video videos, uh, in the morning sessions and the, in the evening session. Um, then basically we're still waiting for a break through um, either one of these levels here either through the a pop, we need a pop up of the 1.1238 zone which is the highest point of december uh, 2019 um, this way the pair also would confirm a forthcoming higher high again from the very short term perspective and uh, more buyers could join in um, but if this upside line fails and the rate starts falling below the 1.1054 55 mark which as you can see acted as a wonderful area of support well, I mean, this is where it could turn out ugly for uh, for Euro USD. But again, for now, uh, we're probably staying aside here and just monitoring uh, these two levels. So yeah, okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Um, again, like I said, this video is coming out in a record as a recording. Um, for now, unfortunately, due to uh, certain uh, problems with the coronavirus, we have to take these measures. And uh, but we will definitely resume the live. Uh, uh, the live videos um, at some point later on so yep uh, keep on uh, checking us out here guys on and on you on YouTube on Facebook as well and uh, um, yep visit us on jvdbank.com and uh, I believe you can find some useful information on all of these resources so yep guys and once again thank you very much for your patience thank you very thank you thank you very much for staying with me and uh, I really appreciate that guys and uh, yep I hope to see you later um, or should I say please catch my uh, later video today uh, 1415 GMT um, the video recording of traders tea time so yep thank you very much guys and have a wonderful trading day bye bye